Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash tales from retail. If you're new around here, please do hit subscribe down below and also check out the discord in the description where you can submit your own stories and chat with people in the community. But without any further ado, let's listen to some stories from retail. I got caught checking the back by a customer. I work at a popular southern grocery store chain at the customer service desk. For whatever reason, numerous produce trucks haven't been making it to our store for the past couple of weeks, so our stock has been very low. As we're a neighborhood store, and small anyways, we usually direct the customers 10 minutes down the road to another location if they're desperate for strawberries. Our store is great about keeping the shelves stocked. There is never anything in the back. If we have it, it's on the shelf. If the shelf is empty, we are out of stock. During the day, there is a two to four hour window where there is no one working the produce department. So customer after customer kept coming up to the desk and insisting we check the back for more strawberries. Despite us telling them that we were out. And at the time I was helping this customer, the truck was an hour away. Even if there was a back to check, I have no idea where they would store the extra produce or how to add strawberries I found in the back to add it to the inventory so I could sell it to this grouchy guy. This customer was insisting I went to the back to check both coolers. There's no coolers, just one cold prep room so I don't know what he was talking about and was trying to convince us to let him go back and check himself which of course we couldn't let him do. So I went to the prep room to look. There was absolutely no produce in that room, but it was also cold AF. So I stood in the hallway next to the room for about 30 seconds to make him feel better about me looking around. I'm sure every retail worker has been there. The customers always believe in the magical back where we hide all the merchandise from them. But this guy came and pressed his face up against the door so he could see me standing there looking mad and that he was taking me away from my job. Whoops. I think that'd be like a really good excuse to take a break or something. You could be like, oh uh, yeah, let me just check in the back here. And then 10 minutes later, you come back after you've had a nice cup of coffee or something. He's like, oh, sorry, I couldn't find it. Woman steals empty ring box, comes back demanding the ring. After rushing to work after my last post, another interesting incident arose. For those of you that didn't read my last post, I work in a jewelry store and we're usually blessed with great clients. Lately, the crazies have been showing up. It's important to note that I'm the only one on the sales floor at the moment because I'm only working with one other person and she's chilling in the back because the mall was quiet. So I get to work and start doing the usual, fixing some displays, cleaning the glass, etc. When, as usual, I gravitate towards the ring section. Rings are my favorite piece of jewelry, so I always end up by that display and it's becoming my baby. I notice there's an empty ring holder, so I go to the ring drawer, which is across the store from the ring display, and choose an adequate replacement. I unlock the display, place the ring on the ring holder, and securely lock the display. I leave the empty ring box on top of the display and head behind the registers to get an elastic band to put on the box. An elastic band on the box just means it's empty and the item is on display. I head back towards the ring box. The ring displays and the empty box is directly beside the front door while the registers are at the back. But as I'm halfway there, this lady runs into the store from one of the tables outside, grabs the box and runs away. It's not the worst issue since there was nothing of value inside it and I got a clear look at her unique face, but it'll be inconvenient when we go to sell the ring. I tell my co-worker who texts the manager but all seems to be going well until two hours later when the box thief returns. She'll be C and I'll be me. Excuse me, I bought a ring here and the box is empty. Me, knowing she's BSing me. Oh, I'm sorry, may I see the box? She hands over the box. I really expected better service from a company like this. I see it's the same box from the ring I displayed. I'm sorry ma'am, when did this happen? Yesterday afternoon. Do you have the receipt? No, I threw it away immediately after. That's alright, 
Your name should be in the system and I can find the purchase that way. My coworker will need to override the system to let me do the search. Just give me one second. This is a lie. I got my coworker and told her to call security. All right, ma'am. Turns out I don't need an override. May I have your last name? C gets a very nervous look on her face. This is really unnecessary. You're treating me like a criminal. I spend the next five minutes wasting time and acting like I don't know how to do my job. I'm the youngest working there, so it's believable. Security arrives. What's going on? I wasn't born yesterday, ma'am. It's like a riddle. She says she's being treated like a criminal, even though she isn't being treated like a criminal, even though she is a criminal. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Cheapskate lady is offended by the price of our least expensive clothes dryer. I work at a hardware store that also sells new home appliances. The appliance department is quite successful in sales due to us being the only place in town to buy them. Plus, we service what we sell. Yesterday, I had to man the department as my co-worker was at lunch and we were short-handed as usual. This lady comes back to my desk and asks for help picking out a new dryer. Okay. Nothing out of the ordinary. I take her over to the dryers and she says she wants our most basic, least expensive unit. We get over there and the conversation goes as such. CL, cheap lady, me, me. Do you have any other dryers that are a lot cheaper than that? Again, this new unit here is the most basic, least expensive model we have. Do you have any sales or discounts going on? We don't have any sales going on, and we only discount appliances if you buy three or more at once, or if the unit has cosmetic damage from shipping. We have a used dryer for $249 if you would like. Is it in good shape? How old is it? It has been repaired to working order by our service department, and it is about 10 years old. I show her the used one, the paint is scratched quite a bit, and the white plastic parts are yellowed, but the unit is perfectly functional. Oh, I don't want this. Look at all these scratches and the yellowed plastic. Those imperfections are only cosmetic and in no way affect its functionality. Okay, how much would you charge to deliver to the next town over? We deliver up to 120 miles from the store and we charge labor and fuel. Since the next town over is 80 miles away, the delivery charge would be $129 extra and we would bring the new one inside and take your old one and scrap it for parts or refurbish it for resale. Forget it, I didn't think getting a dryer and having it delivered would be this expensive. She leaves the store without buying anything. To be fair, there's always, you know, wind outside which is perfectly free I'm pretty sure. Dad thinks he got the same product for half the price. For a couple years, I did some occasional work for a family friend. He was a part owner of a company that sold merchandise at soccer tournaments. The company had some pretty major contracts and literally would get its inventory directly from the brands, i.e. contact Nike with the product orders and hope they could fill it. This didn't prevent people from thinking we were selling knockoff or overpriced products which does happen at smaller local tournaments. There, we are selling at a boys tournament with about 80 teams from all over the country. The week prior was the girls tournament and with the same number of teams. I typically ran the smaller tent at the smaller venue, but would end up at night at the main tent if they were still open. It's pretty late, 8 to 9 p.m., usually about the time we start wrapping up, when this dad shows up with a night hoodie for us to heat press the event logo onto. The logos are to heat press on the non-event product we carry, but when we start running low on product, we give some leeway. The dad said something along the lines of, I knew those hoodies weren't worth 60 bucks. I got that at the outlet and it was only 30. The only things we wouldn't sell at MSRP were event products because those also included the price of being screen printed, and even then, it was only an extra $5. While going to heat press it, I look at the tag, and he was right. He got the hoodie for $30, and it was the same style, except it was a much lower quality material, and you didn't even have to touch it to tell, because it looked like a lower quality material. Regardless, I heat press the logo onto the hoodie, fold it so the logo is facing up, and hand it back to him. He takes the hoodie and leaves, thinking he outsmarted us, 
while a couple of the other dads from his son's team apologised for his behaviour. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed those stories, then please do leave a like on it and subscribe if you aren't already. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.